0-8 Questions and Answers About Embracing the Lotus Sutra Part 1 of 2 Question I have had the rare opportunity to be born a human being and the good fortune to encounter Buddhism. But it is said that there are shallow teachings and there are profound teachings and that some people rank high in capacity while others rank low. Just what teaching should I practice to attain Buddhahood as quickly as possible? I beg you to instruct me on this point. Answer. Each family has its respected elders, and each province is persons of noble station. But although people all look up to their particular lord and pay honour to their own parents, could anyone stand higher than the ruler of the nation? In the same way, Confrontations between the Mahayana and the Hinayana or between the provisional and true teachings are comparable to disputes among rival houses. But among all the sacred teachings expounded by the Buddha in the course of his lifetime, the Lotus Sutra alone holds the position of absolute superiority. It is the guidepost that points the way to immediate attainment of perfect wisdom, the carriage that takes us at once to the place of enlightenment. Question. As I understand it, a teacher is someone who has grasped the central meaning of the Lotus Sutras and treatises and who writes commentaries explaining them. If that is so, then it is only natural that the teachers of the various schools should each formulate doctrines according to their own understanding and on that basis write their commentaries, establish principles and dedicate themselves to the attainment of enlightenment. How could such efforts be in vain? To insist that the Lotus Sutra alone holds the position of absolute superiority is to adopt too narrow a view, I believe. Answer. If you think that to proclaim the absolute superiority of the Lotus Sutra is to take too narrow a view, then one would have to conclude that no one in the world was more narrow-minded than Shakyamuni Buddha. I am afraid you are greatly mistaken in this matter. Let me quote from one of the sutras and from the commentary of one school and see if I can resolve your confusion. The Immeasurable Meaning Sutra says, quote, Because people's nature and desires are not alike, I preach the law in various different ways. Preaching the law in various different ways, I make use of the power of expedient means. But in this more than 40 years, I have not yet revealed the truth, unquote. Hearing this pronouncement, great adornment and the others of the 80,000 bodhisattvas replied in unison, voicing their understanding that, quote, as for those living beings who are unable to hear this sutra, though immeasurable, boundless, inconceivable, amskya kalpas may pass, they will in the end fail to gain unsurpassed enlightenment, unquote. The point of this passage is to make clear that no matter how much one may aspire to the Buddha way by calling upon the name of Amida Buddha or by embracing the teachings of the Zen school, relying on the sutras of the flower garland, agama, correct and equal, and wisdom periods preached by the Buddha during the previous 40 years and more, one will never succeed in attaining supreme enlightenment, even though a countless limitless inconceivable number of Amshaka Kalpas should pass. And this is not the only passage of this type. The expedient means chapter of the Lotus Sutra states, quote, The world honored one has long expounded his doctrines and now must reveal the truth, unquote. It also says, quote, In the Buddha lands of the ten direction, there is only the law of the one vehicle. There are not two, there are not three, unquote. These passages mean that only this Lotus Sutra represents the truth. Again, in the second volume, it says, I am the only person who can rescue and protect others. And it speaks of desiring only to accept and embrace the Sutra of Great Vehicle and not accepting a single word of the other Sutras. These passages means that only Shakyamuni Buddha can save and protect all living beings and that one should wish to accept and uphold only the Lotus Sutra, and never even a verse from any other sutra. It also says, quote, If a person fails to have faith, but instead slanders this sutra, 
immediately he will destroy all the seeds for becoming a Buddha in this world. When his life comes to an end, he will enter Avicii hell. Unquote. This passage means that if one does not believe in the Lotus Sutra, but instead turns against it, one will immediately destroy the seeds of attaining Buddhahood in this world. After death, one will fall into the hell of incessant suffering. Examining these passages, Tian Tai concluded that it was statements such as this that had prompted the words, Is this not a devil pretending to be the Buddha? If we merely rely upon the commentaries of various teachers and do not follow the statements of the Buddha himself, then how can we call our beliefs Buddhism? To do so would be absurd beyond description. Therefore, the great teacher Chris Shou stated that if one claims there is no division of Mahayana and Hinayana among the sutras and no distinction of partial and perfect among revelations of the truth, and therefore accepts all the words of the various teachers, then the preachings of the Buddha will have been to no purpose. Tian Tai asserted that which has a profound doctrine and accords with the sutras is to be written down and made available, but put no faith in anything that in word or meaning fails to do so. He also said that all assertions that lack scriptural proof are to be branded false. How could you interpret such statements? Question. What you have just said may apply to the commentaries of the teachers. But what about the sutras preached before the Lotus Sutra that state, this is the formal sutra, or this is the king of sutras? If one were to go by what you have said, then one would have to reject these pronouncements, which are the words of the Buddha himself. Is this not so? Answer. Although this earlier sutra may include such statements as, this is the formal sutra, or this is the king of sutras, they are all nevertheless provisional teachings. One should not rely on such pronouncements. The Buddha himself commented on this point when he said, quote, Rely on sutras that are complete and final, and not on those that are not complete and final. Unquote. And the great teacher Miao Lo stated, quote, Though other sutras may call themselves the king among sutras, there is none that announces itself as the foremost among all the sutras preached in the past, now being preached or to be preached in the future. Thus, one should understand them according to the principle of combining, excluding, corresponding, and including. Unquote. This passage of commentary is saying in essence that even if there should be a sutra that calls itself the king of sutras, if it does not also declare itself superior to those preached before it and those to be preached after, then one should know that it is a sutra belonging to the expedient teachings. It is the way of the sutras preached before the Lotus Sutra to say nothing concerning the sutras that will be preached in the future. Only in the case of the Lotus Sutra, because it is the final and ultimate statement of the Buddha's teachings, do we find a clear pronouncement that this sutra alone holds the place of absolute superiority among the sutras I have preached? now preach and will preach. Hence, one commentary states, Only in the Lotus Sutra did the Buddha explain the meaning of his earlier teachings and clarify the true meaning of this present teaching. Thus, we may see that in the Lotus Sutra, the Das Kam One gave definite form both to his true intention and to the methods to be used in teaching and converting living beings. It is for this reason that Tian Tai stated, After the Das Kam One attained enlightenment, for 40 years and more he did not reveal the truth. With the Lotus Sutra, he for the first time revealed the truth. In other words, for more than 40 years after the Das Kam One went out into the world, he did not reveal the true teaching. In the Lotus Sutra, he for the first time revealed the true way that leads to the attainment of Buddhahood. Question. I understand what you say about the Lotus Sutra being foremost among all the sutras that the Buddha has preached, now preaches and will preach. But there is a certain teacher who says that the statement, in these more than 40 years, I have not yet revealed the truth, is meant to apply only to the wise hearers, 
who were able to achieve Buddhahood through the Lotus Sutra. It does not apply to the Bodhisattvas, who had already gained the benefit of enlightenment through the sutras preached prior to the Lotus Sutra. What is your opinion on this matter? Answer. You are referring to the view that the Lotus Sutra was preached for the benefits of those of the two vehicles and not for Bodhisattvas, and that the words, I have not yet revealed the truth, therefore apply only to the two vehicles. This was the opinion put forth by the great teacher Tokisu, a priest of the Dharma Characteristics School. It has been repudiated by the great teacher Dengyo, who wrote, quote, There is at present a certain feeder on lowly food who has composed several volumes of spurious writings, slandering the law and slandering persons. How can he possibly escape falling into hell? Unquote. As a result of these words of censure directed at him, Tokisu's tongue split into eight pieces and he died. Be that as it may, the assertion that the statement, I have not yet revealed the truth, was made for the sake of the people of the two vehicles is in itself completely reasonable. The reason is that, from the very beginning, the fundamental purpose of the Dust Come Once preaching was to open the way to enlightenment for the people of the two vehicles, and the methods of instruction used throughout his teaching life, as well as the skillful means exhibited in his three cycles of preaching, were chiefly employed for them. In the Flower Garland Sutra, beings dwelling in hell are deemed able to become Buddhas, but wise hearer and cause awakened ones are condemned as incapable of doing so. In the Correct and Equal Sutras, it is stated that just as lotus flowers cannot grow on the peak of a high mountain, so the people of the two vehicles have scorched the seeds of Buddhahood and hence can never attain it. And in the Wisdom Sutras, we read that persons who have committed the five cardinal sins can attain Buddhahood, but that those of the two vehicles are rejected as unable to do so. The dust come one now declared as his true intention that these pitiful abandoned persons could indeed attain Buddhahood, using this as a standard to demonstrate the superiority of the Lotus Sutra. Therefore, Tiantai stated, quote, Neither the Flower Garland Sutra nor the larger Wisdom Sutra could cure the plight of these persons of the two vehicles. The Lotus Sutra alone was able to produce the roots of goodness in those who have nothing more to learn and to make it possible for them to attain the Buddha way. Therefore, the sutra is called Myo, or Wonderful. Again, the Ichantikas, or persons of incorrigible disbelief, nevertheless have minds, and so it is still possible for them to attain Buddhahood. But persons of the two vehicles have annihilated consciousness, and therefore cannot arouse the mind that aspires to enlightenment. And yet, the Lotus Sutra can cure them, which is why it is called Myo or Wonderful. Unquote. There is no need for me to explain in detail the import of this passage. One should understand once and for all that even the medicine of the teachings offered by the Flower Garland, Correct and Equal, and Larger Wisdom Sutras cannot cure the grave illness that afflicts persons of the two vehicles. Moreover, in the sutras preached before the Lotus Sutra, even guilty persons who are condemned to inhabit the three evil paths are regarded as bodhisattvas and therefore able to attain Buddhahood. But no such recognition is accorded to the persons of the two vehicles. With regards to this point, the great teacher Miao Lo stated, quote, In the various sutras, it is sometimes taught that beings in all other paths are led to the true path of Buddhahood but there is absolutely no such hope offered to the two vehicles. Therefore, in the Lotus Sutra, beings in the sixth path are grouped with Bodhisattvas as being assured of Buddhahood. And the power of the Sutra is set forth with respect to those of the two vehicles for whom Buddhahood is the most difficult to achieve. Unquote. Indeed, Tai established that attainment of Buddhahood by persons of the two vehicles is proof that all living beings without exception can become Buddhas. Could one think it difficult for an Ashura to cross the great ocean? Could one possibly think it easy for a child to overthrow a strong man? In like manner, 
the sutras preached before the Lotus Sutra explain that person who have seeds of the Buddha nature may attain Buddhahood. But nowhere is it stated that those whose seeds are hopelessly scorched can ever do so. It is only the good medicine of the Lotus Sutra that can readily cure this grave affliction. Now, if you wish to attain Buddhahood, you have only to lower the banner of your arrogance, cast aside the staff of your anger, and devote yourself exclusively to the one vehicle of the Lotus Sutra. Worldly fame and profit are mere bubbles of your presence assistance, and arrogance and prejudice are ties that will fetter you in the next one. Ah, you should be ashamed of them, and you should fear them too. Hello everyone, thank you for listening to this podcast, Gosho Reading, Nichiren Buddhism, by The Ignorant Trail. We try to keep each episode of the Gosho within 25 to 30 minutes. If it were too long, such as this one, we will break it into multiple parts. This concludes part one of the Gosho and there will be subsequent parts in the following weeks. Please stay tuned. Thank you again for listening.